Father, anoint this in Jesus' name. This is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Reading 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption, which means neither does the impure inherit the good and the pure. So I'm just, you know, breaking that down to simplified terms. It's oversimplified. But listen to this. This is what came to me. I'm getting ready to go to bed, believe it or not. <laughs> but anyway, this is what came to me. When you are looking at life, one of the weapons, from what I read earlier, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, da, da, da. Satan will use your flesh. Satan will use your desires to work against you. Satan will even use your fears. So let's say you're getting ready to uh, get your degree or your doctorate whatever the case may be. And you, everything has fallen into place. All the ducks have lined up in a row. Your full scholarship, everything is lined up. Or uh, you are a professional and you're right at the door of crossing the threshold to a higher level, to a higher paying position where you are set for life if you get that position. Well, what ends up happening is Satan starts to pull strings. Now remember, he walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You know, if a person slaps me, I can haul off and slap him back. Or I can choose to walk away and disengage from the drama that could turn out to be something that could get me arrested and ruin my record. See how that kind of stuff snowballs out of control. So Satan will set the stage. He will usher somebody in. For some of you who are just about to meet your mate that God has for you, and Satan, you've heard of a reasonable facsimile? Yeah. Well, Satan will bring in an unreasonable facsimile as your distraction so that you will get caught up with them through the spirit of seduction which is another form of distraction and temptation, which is meant to lead you into sin. And once you get caught up into sin, now your focus and your attention is off the mark you're supposed to be pressing toward. And your emotions get all caught up in this special somebody that Satan has brought around. And while Satan is bringing that person into your view and you're getting caught up in, in, in that cobweb, that snare that Satan has trapped you with, here comes your, your divine loved one. They're checking you out, but you're taken as far as they see. So they don't try, they keep going. And you could be missing out on a gold mine when it comes to a man or a woman. Now, that happened to me with my husband. Some guy, reasonable, un unreasonable, facsimile, a distraction came around. God got through with me and I got through with God because I stayed all in God's face. And God did answer me and said, no, that ain't the one. And a week after, that one disappeared out of my life. After I said, I'll still a bye-bye, my husband gave me a call and started dating me. Look what I would have missed out on. Not many people have the kind of relationship I ended up with with my husband. Not many people get to enjoy that. I loved him and enjoyed him so much that I could say right now, if God said, if you go to heaven, you'll have to spend eternity with him, I would say, yes! That's a good marriage. That's a solid relationship. Some of you are missing out on relationships. You're missing out on your husbands because you can't stay out the bed from what's his face. You're missing out on your wife, a wonderful wife. You can't stay out of the bed of those prostitutes. I mean, Satan knows how to push our buttons. He knows how to get you into a fight. You drink too much. 
and you're drinking too much because you're around your buddies. And you know you're having this pissing contest, and you want your 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 male compadres to know that you are big and bad and bodacious, and hey, you got it going on. You can handle your liquor. You can handle anything they can handle. Anything they can do, you can do better. So you have your little pissing contest, and then you get drunk, and you and one of the buddies get in an argument, and bam, 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 you're in a fight. And they fall, bust their head open, and they're dead. Now you got to go to prison. And everything you were working towards, everything that you were getting involved in, falls. Falls to nothing, goes to dust. You women, get caught up in the wrong one. You get pregnant. Oh boy, what do you do now? Get an abortion and guilt trip about that? Or have a complication and die from that? Or you have the baby and you have an 18 to 20 or 50 year jail sentence, depending upon how poorly you raise that kid and if they never grow up. And now you can't get a man because half of them don't want to be bothered with a woman with a child. Or they don't want to be bothered with, if they like children, they don't like yours because you haven't raised them. You just kind of let them be because he was an oops anyway and you just didn't want to be bothered. I mean, it just gets crazy. The, the snowball goes out of, it's like a runaway train. The train is no longer headed towards its destiny. It's getting ready to, to jump the track. And that's what your life is about to do. Derail you because you have allowed yourself to be devoured. You have allowed yourself to get caught up in the flesh and blood of life. You have allowed your desires to be caught up in your flesh, and your blood. Hey, baby, yeah, suck it, suck it now. You done forgot about your degree. You forgot about your marriage. You've forgotten about your child. You've forgotten about your health, all kind of stuff. You've forgotten about your future because the here and now feels so good and tintillating. Well, don't you know that, Satan? That's... The whole point. He's got you head over heels in love with nonsense because the real deal is up ahead of you and you're about to cross over that threshold. So what happens on that job in that corporate situation? You are ready to get that job that has you set for life, baby. But what happens? You cheat on your wife or you cheat on your husband. The temptation has just come. You just couldn't pass that one up because, see, Satan knows how to work and deteriorate your family situation, your relationship with your spouse so that you start looking over someone else's fence or looking up someone else's skirt or looking at someone else's pants because the one you got ain't serving your purpose. And you feel cheated and deprived. So rather than give them a little space, nope, no, you're going to yield to temptation. And when you yield, here comes a divorce. When a divorce comes, here comes the pressure, the fear, and the drama. So now you can't even put your mind on your job. And you miss out on that great corporate position. I am telling you it. It is such a domino effect. It's a ripple effect. Don't allow corruption to come into your life. Good will never come out of it. You can only, corruption can only inherit, in, I mean, yeah, corruption can only inherit corruption. Bad cannot inherit good. It's just not going to happen. You can't throw the... Uh, you, you uh, throw the penny in the pond and think that's going to change things. If you're caught up in nonsense, nonsense is going to turn into hell on wheels. If you sow to the wind, you will reap the whirlwind. You don't want that. You don't want to reap that whirlwind. That is hell on wheels. And flush right down the toilet goes all the good stuff that was lined up for you that you were heading towards, that you were pressing towards until you said, oh, 
Think about that. See, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has has it entered into the mind what God has in store for you. That's a loose quotation of Isaiah. You don't realize what God has for you. You don't, you don't really fathom it. But you're willing to play with the luck of the draw because what's happening right now? <laughs> Ooh, baby. And you are down here, caught up in what's happening right here and everything that's right within your reach. You have slid back and now you can't even touch it. And you've lost years and decades worth of progress. You have to be very careful what you decide to, to tamper with. Married man, leave that woman alone. Don't let her keep coming in your office. You stop going by her office and having coffee with her during coffee breaks having lunch with her during lunch break, you stop it because your life will blow up in your face. Stop it now. Put her in her place. If she doesn't belong in your bed, you don't belong in her bed because she's not your wife, you're not her husband, you're someone else's husband. Cut that loose like a disease. It is meant to destroy you and that relationship will not last. Trust me when I say that. That's a warning I'm picking up. And whoever you are, you're watching this video, you know who you are. You know exactly who you are, and you know exactly who that female is. Cut that woman loose. I don't care if it's a casual acquaintance. You don't even need that, because Satan will use her and your desires to wreak havoc on your whole life, on your whole future. And you will derail horribly. That's a warning I got. And I hope that you take heed because it is for you. God bless all of you. Please don't allow Satan to devour you. In the name of Jesus.